So what the hello everyone. So welcome to our continuation of our discussion about adjusting entries. So this is your instructor Noel Bergonya. So just sit back, relax, take down notes, and if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes or you can comment on this video lecture. Okay. So. We have mentioned in our introduction that adjusting entries are entries prepared at the end of the accounting period to update the balances of the accounts. We have also mentioned that um, there are different types of adjusting entries and one of them is all about the uncollectible accounts natin. Okay? So when we talk about uh, accounts receivable, diba? based on our usual transactions being recorded, the entities are often allowing clients or customers to purchase goods or to avail services on account or on credit. So the basic premise, no, bakit tayo nagdi-discuss nitong uncollectible accounts is because we have recorded accounts receivable no, in our uh, book of accounts no, due to the client's purchase of goods or availment of services on account or on credit. Pero no, um, because we have receivables, and they will be collected in the future, sometimes diba? there will be accounts that will never be collected or there is a possibility na hindi po makolekta yun. Ikaw ba? No? Naranasan mo na ba na mangutang <laughs> okay, or magpautang tapos hindi nakakolekta? No? It's either ikaw yung hindi nagbayad or si... Uh, kaibigan yung hindi nagbayad no so uh, with regards to that no uh, in accounting we need to be conservative no and recording immediately okay whatever is related um, loss that we might encounter for non uh, collection of these accounts okay so as part of adjusting entries na gagawin natin in this video lecture an expense or a loss no typically a loss is recognized for the uncollectible accounts in the current period rather than waiting it to become uncollectible. In the concept of accounting, kasi no, remember, we have to recognize immediately the uh, income or expenses at the, at the period when it occurs, regardless when the cash is received or paid. And in this uh, uncollectible accounts, no, so dapat at the time that we have detected or estimated that the customers could not be able to pay, then we immediately recognize a loss related to that. Wag na nating antayin na hindi pa siya makapagbayad. Okay? So that's how conservative we are because we don't want to overstate our um, net income. At the same time, we don't want to understate our loss or expenses. Moreover, no, uh, please uh, take note that with regards to this uncollectible accounts, no, so... Um, not necessarily naman na uh, most of the time you have uncollectability. It's based on your experience as a company. Kasi baka yung company mo naman, mabilis naman yung turnover ng pangungulekta, kaya wala ka namang experience na hindi nagbayad. But for those businesses who have experience na um, possibility na hindi nagbayad si customer, then you set up na po itong uncollectible accounts ninyo. Okay? So there are two methods in accounting that can be used no in uh, the uncollectible accounts. We have the allowance method and we have the direct write-off method. But for this particular discussion, we will just be using and discussing the allowance method because this is the most commonly used. At the same time, this is more aligned with our matching principle. Ano nga ba ulit yung matching principle? We match the expense okay, in the period uh, where... Uh, the income was recognized. So, kaya natin i-recognize immediately yung expense rather than waiting it to be uncollectible. It's because we want to match it with our income. Okay? Yung direct write-off kasi one of the, uh, kumbaga po na sa kanya is it does not generally um, talk about matching principle. Kasi sa direct write-off, kung kailan lang hindi magbayad si customer, then saka mo lang i-record yung loss. Okay? So we don't want that. We want to immediately recognize it at the time that it was estimated to occur. Okay? So let's focus on allowance method. So ano po ba tong allowance method natin? Again, class, ah, going back no, dun sa previous slide, the basic premise why we are going to discuss this uncollectible account, it's because there are possibilities that the customers where we have accounts receivables no, are 
not going to pay us or estimated that based on our experience no we are um having problems or difficulty in terms of collections thus recognizing a loss related to that immediately okay at the period it was estimated so in terms of allowance method this recognize um, the loss if a count receivable is already doubtful of collection so mas align siya doon sa diniskas natin kanina at the same time this allowance method will uh, be using what we so-called allowance account. Okay, so allowance for doubtful accounts, uncollectible accounts, or bad debts. These three terminologies na doubtful accounts, bad debts, at saka uncollectible accounts, isa lang po ang pinapatungkulan yan. Yung possibility na hindi makapagbayad. Okay, so I, either of the two what uh, will appear in the chart of accounts in you, that means uh, with regards to uncollection. No? Um, please take note lang class ha na yung titles na to, kung ano man yung minention sa ating may encounter na problem, yun po yung gamitin natin para at least align tayo. Kung bad debts ang ginamit, then we use the allowance for bad debts. Uncollectible at the uncollectible accounts ang gamitin natin. Okay, so this allowance account is a contra account. So um, kung babalikan natin yung module number through, Two, kung naalala ninyo, no? so we have different types of accounts. We have um, the usual account natin, no? which has a normal balance. And then I have introduced already your uh, contra account. Okay, so let's define contra account again. Pag sinabi mong contra account from the word itself, contra, it contradicts no? the usual account. And ano yung kinokontra nito? This actually contradicts your accounts receivable. So kung account receivable, ang kanyang normal balance ay ano class? The normal balance is debit. So being a contra account, allowance for doubtful accounts is considered as having a normal balance of credit. Okay? So this is actually our first contra account na itong allowance uh, for doubtful, bad debts, or uncollectible accounts. So please remember that. no. In the future, we will encounter naman yung tinatawag natin na adjunct account. Uh, by the way, adjunct account is an account that was being added. Okay? Itong contra deducted, ito namang um, adjunct added. Pero we will not encounter it yet here in adjusting entry. no. So scrap muna natin yan. Nabanggit ko lang. Okay? So again, we will have contra accounts. And again, we use allowance method because it produces better matching of our income and expenses based on the concept of matching principle. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes or you can comment in this particular video lecture. All right. So let's proceed with the next slide. So I just want to show you lang in this uh, slide no, the sequence of the entries that will be encountered when we use allowance method. So we will just be focusing here with regards to adjusting entries, no, the uncollectible accounts at the end of the accounting period. Ito class, pinapakita ko yung pro forma entry. Pero sa mga succeeding slides, doon naman natin ipapakita yung ating computation kung paano makuha ito. Okay, so kapag meron po tayong um, uncollectible accounts, so we will be debiting an expense account. Okay, so debit uncollectible accounts expense, okay, or bad debts expense, or doubtful accounts expense. So depende sa title na nag-fit doon sa problem na sinasagutan natin or whatever is in the chart of accounts. Okay, so we have expense. Sir, bakit expense? Hindi naman natin nagamit. Again, the premise why we are debiting expense because we have incurred a loss related to the possibility of uncollections. Okay, and then we credit our allowance for uncollectible accounts. So this is yung binanggit natin kanina na contra account. Okay, at ang normal balance ng contra account ay what? Credit. Sir, na-meet pa ba natin yung requirement na isang real, isang nominal? Tignan natin. No? So, the uncollectible accounts expense is an expense which is a nominal account. Diba? So, this is a nominal account or a temporary account. So, check tayo dyan. And then, the allowance is a contra asset. Ang kinokontra niya ay receivable. So, ito ay isang contra asset. At again, even though it's a contra asset, so this is also considered pa rin as a real account. So yes, we have met the requirement of adjusting entries no, to have at least one nominal and one real account. 
So ito yung makikita natin mamaya pag nag adjust tayo, no? debit and collectible accounts or bad debts or doubtful accounts expense and credit allowance for uncollectible accounts, bad debts or doubtful accounts depending upon the title which will be used in our um, problem or in the chart of accounts. Okay? So are we clear on that? Um, as to the computation of the amount to be written there later po sa mga susunod na slide. Okay? So yan yung focus natin, yung adjusting entry. Um, in addition, no, so um, just in case that we will encounter in the future uh, something that will happen to the receivable that is related also to the allowance method pero hindi naman adjusting entry, okay, ito po yung mga entries. Okay, so what if there is a write-off? Kanina kasi dito sa uncollectible accounts class, um, possibility lang siya diba, na hindi makolekta. Pero ngayon, what if there is a write-off? Pag sinabi nating write-off, this is already eliminating. No? Tatanggalin mo na talaga. Yung tipong, yung kutob mo, kutob mo, hindi mo makukolekta, kaya ka nag-adjusting entry. Pero, kaya ka nag-write-off kasi natuluyan na, na hindi mo makukolekta. Pwedeng hindi mo na, hindi mo na nakukontakt si customer or even baka na bankrupt na si customer kaya hindi na natin siya makolektahan. So what will happen if that will be allow under allowance method? So pag nag-write off no or tatanggalin lahat, ang entry natin is debit allowance for uncollectible accounts or uh, bad debts or doubtful accounts. Okay? And then we credit the account receivable. So kaya din debit yung allowance kasi tatanggalin mo na yung allowance, di ba? Nag-expect ka na nung una, kaya ka nag-adjust. Ngayon natuluyan na, tanggalin mo na yung allowance. And then yung receivable na related to that, tatanggalin mo na para hindi ka na malito kasi wala nang pag-asa. <laughs> Charat lang. Okay. Wala nang pag-asang makolekta. So ayun ha, that's a write-off. Pero we, again, we will not be di discussing further this since we're just focusing on the adjusting entries. Okay? Then, if ever, ito yung maganda, no? Even though we have written off the account, no? Inexpect natin, hindi makukulekta. Natulo yung hindi nakulekta. Pero bigla siyang bumalik, kagaya ni X. Charat lang. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> Corny ni sir, no? Pero ayun, uh, biglang nabuhay si customer. Biglang nagbayad. So, what will happen? So, we will have recovery. Okay, so pwede pala yun sir no na um, tinanggal na natin kasi hindi na makukolekta pero pwede pala na pag binalikan tayo, pwede pa nating ibuhayin ulit, mag-record ulit, oh. Balikan yung nakaraan. Yes. So this will what happen if we have to recover a written off account. So nag-write off, tinanggal na natin lahat related to the receivable. So pag nag-recover, buhayin mo lang ulit, no? You just simply debit the account receivable na related na tinanggal natin nung nag-write off. Tapos i-credit din natin yung allowance at the time na ayan no nag-write off tayo magkano yung ating dinebit no or tinanggal sa allowance so after that since recovery ito ibig sabihin nagbayad na si customer so kung nagbayad na siya so the usual collection entry debit cash credit accounts receivable okay so that's about recovery Okay, so we will try to discuss that in, in other uh, video lectures. But for this time, we will just be focusing on the uncollectible accounts. No? So do not forget, it will be debit the expense and credit our contra asset account, which is allowance. Okay, so are we clear on that? Again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay, so I hope that it's clear, ha? Huh? So, if pagod na kayo, you can pause for a while, take a break, then balikan nyo lang din kagaya ng nangyari dito sa written off account, no? Corny ni sir. Okay. So, right now, no, we will be discussing no, about doon naman sa uh, amount to be recorded as uncollectible at saka allowance at the adjusting entry. So, actually, uh, there are two methods to be discussed. Isa lang yung binanggit ko sa module, no? but uh, right now, I will be discussing both uh, the outstanding account receivable method at saka yung um, based on the aging of receivables. Okay? So, unahin natin yung percentage of outstanding account receivable method. So, this is one way, no? depending on the problem that we encounter or even the policy of the company, Okay, in terms of estimating the uncollectible accounts. So pag sinabi nating percentage of outstanding accounts receivable method, so in this method, okay, 
um, the account receivable closing balance. So kung magkano yun nakalagay doon sa ating um, trial balance or after considering, considering everything in the account receivable, no, kung ano man po yung ating ending balance ng receivable, no, you will just multiply it with the percentage of the management's estimated and collectible accounts. Okay, kaya siya based doon sa outstanding or natitirang amount ng account receivable method. Okay? So, sir, saan magagaling yung percentage? Um, in problems that we will encounter, of course, it will be given. But in reality, you know, the percentage would be a culmination of either the experience of the company at the same time their policy. Okay? And actually, the final say about the percentage is in the policy nila. Okay? So, in their... Um, estimation no so pwedeng sabi nila 1% nung outstanding receivable balance or ending balance na receivable pwedeng 2% so sila yung nakakaalam walang specific na kailangan ito yung percentage no it depends upon the level of uh, confidence of the company in terms of the collection at the same time based on their experience okay so to show you how this outstanding account receivable method works no at pag multiply yung closing balance ng receivable at saka percentage that is actually the allowance no so yung allowance ulit for doubtful accounts is a contra account okay so to give you an example ito yung ating example for this problem so assume that on December 31 2020 DBK Incorporated having a 1 million ending balance of account receivable. So, ito yung ating um, closing balance or outstanding balance, 1 million pesos. Okay? It is estimated that 3% will be considered as uncollectible. So, itong 3%, this is the percentage, the management estimated uncollectible accounts. Now, um, diba sabi natin, no? um, if we multiply the ending balance and the estimated percentage ang makukuha po natin is yung tinatawag na estimated or required balance ng ating contra account na allowance for uncollectible accounts. Okay, so ibig sabihin, yung 3% na yun, which is actually 30,000, yun po yung total na possible na hindi natin makolekta. Okay? Are we clear on that? That's the 30,000, 3% ng 1 million na hindi natin possible makolekta. So, yan na po ba agad yung gagamitin namin sa adjusting entry? And the answer is, it depends upon the situation. So, paano it depends upon the situation? Okay? Bago tayo mag-proceed doon, again, uh, sa computation ha, pag minultiplied nyo using the outstanding account receivable balance method, yung ending receivable at saka yung percentage ang makukuha po is the estimated or required balance ng allowance account po natin. Okay? That's not yet the adjusting entry kasi or the adjusting amount since it depends upon the situation. So let me show you now the situations that would affect the amount of our adjusting entry. So you have situation number one. Halimbawa, no, before kang mag-adjust, walang balance yung allowance for uncollectible accounts. Okay, sir, possible ba yon na walang balance yung uncollectible accounts? Sir, paano before adjustments? Ibig sabihin lang, no, uh, kung titignan mo yung accounting record mo, di ba, kaya ka tayo nagkakaroon ng allowance, it's because there is a possibility of uncollection. Now, if in our problem to be stated here or even in the reality, no, wala kang balance before adjustment. Baka kasi in the previous time or previous period, baka lahat naman nakolekta mo. No? Wala kang expectation na hindi makukolekta. So kaya no balance before adjustment. Okay, so what will happen? If there is no balance before adjustment or wala kayong nakita sa problem, kagaya nito, no? hindi naman sinabi na may balance ng allowance before tayo mag-adjust. Okay, so ang gagawin po natin is kung magkano po yung na-compute na allowance for uncollectible account, that should be the amount already of our adjustments. Okay, ulitin ko, pag walang balance before adjustment, pag tinignan mo yung problem, walang nakalagay na, let's say for example, this is 2020. Halimbawa, walang nakalagay na January 1, 2020. Okay, yun yung beginning balance na nanggaling last period. no? Walang nakalagay na allowance. Or baka wala rin nakalagay na December 31, balance before adjustment. No? Um, 
walang nakalagay, silent, no? hindi mo makita. So we will assume that there is no balance before adjustment. Okay? At even kung hindi mo rin siya ma-extract or ma-recompute based on the given data, wala kang nakita, then ganun din ang i-assume. No balance before adjustments. So ano po yung magiging adjusting entry natin? As mentioned to you a while ago, no? So we will be debiting on the December 31, which is the end of the reporting period, okay, uncollectible accounts expense 30,000. So bakit po uncollectible accounts expense ang ginamit na title? Kasi yung given po na title was allowance for uncollectible accounts. So para magpantay yung ating um, use of title, we use as well the uncollectible accounts expense in the debit. So this is the loss that we are expecting 30,000. Wala nang ibang recomputation kung hindi yung um, 1 million times 3%. Okay? Then we credit our allowance or the contra account na 30,000. Okay? So, yan yung pinakasimple sa lahat. No? If there is no allowance account adjust before adjustment balance. Okay? Or wala kayo nakikita talaga sa problem na allowance before mag-adjust. Okay, so the ending balance will be uh, your um, amount of adjustment. Okay, so are we clear on that? All right, so that's our situation number one. Now, we have second situation. Still hatandaan ninyo 30,000 yung na-compute natin na ending balance dapat. Okay, so we have situation two. What if daw, bago ka mag-adjust, Okay, bago ka mag-adjustment, merong credit balance ng allowance for uncollectible accounts okay, amounting to 10000 Sir, paano nagkaroon ng credit balance yung allowance? Remember, the normal balance of our allowance is credit. Tama? Kasi contra asset account yan. Now, um, kaya nagkakaroon ng balance before adjustments, it's either no, nag-undergo na siya ng usual entries, kagaya nung pinakita natin kanina using the allowance method, yung mga sequence of entry about write-off, the recovery, o kaya naman that balance is actually coming from the previous accounting period. no? Kasi baka may expectation ka doon, ang expectation mo lang 10,000. Okay, based on computation. So kaya mayroong credit balance before adjustment. Please take note ha, credit balance before ka mag-adjust, which is the normal balance of allowance. So what will happen? Will it affect our amount of the adjusting entry or not? The answer is yes, it will affect. No, So um, still on December 31, the entry was debit and collectible accounts expense, but by this time, it is already 20000 Okay, not 30,000 na. And credit allowance for uncollectible accounts, 20,000. Again, what's the reason bakit 20,000 na lang? Kasi po, parang ganito lang yan. Pakita ko yung T-account, no? you are familiar already with the T-account ng ating allowance. Okay, anong normal balance ng allowance? Credit, tiba. So nang nag-compute tayo kanina sa previous slide, ang na-compute natin na required balance ay dapat 30,000. Pero bago ka mag-adjust, meron ka na daw balance dyan na 10,000. So tignan mo, no? 10,000 naka-record na. Kailangan maging 30,000. So alangan naman, i-adjust mo pa siya ng 30,000. Eh di ba dapat magiging 40 na? So mali na tayo. Kaya ang dapat na adjustment amount lang natin is 20,000. Okay? So it is 20,000 because your 30,000 na computed na ending balance minus your credit balance before adjustment na 20,000. Okay? Para kasi ang mangyari, 10,000 bago mag-adjust plus 20 na in-adjust. So, ang ending talaga natin ay 30,000. Okay? So, that's how it works. Ha? Pag credit balance before adjustment, dinededuct yung amount na yon para makuha yung ating adjustments. Okay? Para, uh, again, dinededuct yung credit balance mula sa required balance ng allowance account natin. Pag sinabi mo kasing required balance, yun na talaga yung kabuuan ng hindi natin possible makolekta. At yung 10,000 naka-record na, kaya para i-adjust, yung karagdagan na lang po yung i-adjust natin. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. Ha? So ingat kayo. Pag may balance before adjustment, tignan ninyo kung debit ba siya or credit. Okay? And then, Bakit po kailangan tingnan debit and credit? Kasi magkaiba siya ng treatment. So itong situation 3 naman, no, it is uh, in the assumption where there is a debit balance naman 
bago mag-adjust. Ayan. Sir, bakit na naman may debit balance before adjustment? Um, debit balance in the allowance account only happens before adjustment. Okay? Always yan. Hindi pwede na magkaroon ng debit balance ang allowance after mo mag-adjustments. No, that's not the case. Okay? So, debit balance can only appear before adjustment. So, the possibility why we have a debit balance, it's because pwedeng yung kaninang pinakita kong series of entry in the allowance no, is um, nangyari and then nung tinignan mo ay nagkaroon ng debit balance. Most likely, baka mas malaki yung ating tinatawag na write-off Okay? Mas malaki yung ni-write off mo kesa doon sa na-recover mo. Try ninyo, ang na-write off is 10,000. Di ba? Nakadebit yung allowance. Tapos ang ni-recover mo lang is let's say 5,000. So, ibig sabihin, meron kang debit balance okay? sa allowance. So, what will happen if there is a debit balance? So, nakalagay dapat sa problem yan pag tinignan nyo ha? or in your T-account. Tignan natin. Pag T-account ang ginamit natin for allowance, again, anong normal balance? Credit. Kaso, yung balance mo bago mag-adjust ay 10,000. So, lagay ko sa debit ha, 10,000. Tapos, ang kailangan mo, nag-compute tayo kanina, how much is the percentage of outstanding receivable balance method dapat maging 30,000. Oh, so, magkano i-adjust natin? Nasa debit yung 10. 30 dapat sa credit. So, di ba? Dapat mas malaki yung adjustments natin. So, the adjustments is actually 40,000. Kasi 40,000 credit minus 10,000 debit. So, that will still be equal to 30,000 credit. So, pag may debit balance before adjustment, which is in situation 3, ang gagawin po natin is to be added. Okay, kaya yung ating adjustments would be debit and collectible accounts expense 40,000 and credit allowance for uncollectible accounts 40,000. Okay, again that's because the debit balance before adjustment na allowance needs to be added to the computed required balance. So nakita niyo na yung pinagkaiba ha? so make sure that you check properly yung problems na sinasagutan ninyo. Pag credit balance before adjustment, you need to deduct it para makuha yung adjustments. Yung debit balance naman before adjustment, okay, kailangan i-add doon sa required allowance para makuha yung adjustments po natin. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear ha. So, we have situation 1, 2, and 3. So, hindi ko naman sasabihin kung ano situation pagdating ng uh, pagsasagot ninyo class ha? But I want you to appreciate and to check uh, the problem no? based on the data given and apply whatever we have given here based on situation 1. Pag walang um, balance before mag-adjust, eh di kung magkano yung computed ending balance ng allowance, yun na po yun. So situation 2, i-deduct yung credit balance bago mag-adjust para makuha yung adjustments. And lastly, pag debit naman, i-add. Okay? So I hope malinaw yun ha. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. Okay? So to end this uh, discussion natin, okay, so um, please take note class na sa ating um, financial statements which will be discussed in module number 5, no? your receivable needs to be presented at um, a net realizable value or amortized cost. Sir, ano po yun, net realizable value? That is actually the difference ng ating accounts receivable, ending balance, at saka yung ending balance ng allowance. Again, ha, ending saka ending. Ha, so yung computed balance ng account receivable at saka yung allowance natin. So dito sa problem ni DBK Incorporated, no, pag tinanong kita, magkano mo siya ipipresent sa statement of financial position kasi asset itong ating allowance at contra account yung ating allowance. No? So it will be presented, ay, sorry, natabunan. Burahin ko ha. So again, the formula is the ending balance of the receivable less the ending balance of allowance or yung na-compute natin na required balance. So pag tinanong ka magkano ipipresent sa statement of financial position, yung ating DBK's account receivable, so it will be simply your account's receivable ending which is given kanina sa previous slide na 1 million minus yung na-compute natin na ending balance ng allowance. 
Kasi di ba pag sinabi nating ending balance ng allowance, ito yung possible na totality ng hindi makolekta. So kung yung kabuuan ng receivable mo ay 1 million at yung total ng possible na hindi mo makolekta ay 30,000, thus we have 970,000. So yung 970,000 is the amount na possible na lang natin na makolekta and that is known as your net realizable value. Okay? Uh, other term for the net realizable value will be carrying value of receivable. Okay? Please take note of this. Carrying value of receivable. Kasi yun na lang talaga yung natitira. Accounts receivable lang ito ha. Or ito rin po yung tinatawag na amortized costs. Amortized costs of accounts receivable. Kung magkano na lang yung possible na makolekta natin in the future. Kaya naka-minus yung ending kasi ano nga tawag ulit sa allowance? This is considered as a contra asset account. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. All right? So that's our first example about percentage of outstanding account receivable method. Okay? So to have an additional uh, example, so ito naman po yung example to natin. No? So again, you are asked of the adjusting entries for the year ended December 31, 2020. So a company's trial balance dated December 31, 2020 contains the following information. So at the end of the reporting period, December 31, 2020, may accounts receivable ka daw na 300,000 na balance. Tapos ang allowance for bad debts mo was 2 million. Tignan mo, nakalagay credit. So uh, alam nyo na yung mangyari dyan later. Then meron kang sales na 1,500,000. Um, wala tayong pakialam sa sales in this case since we are using the outstanding account receivable method. So kagaya ni Crush, ignore mo lang yan. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay? And then it is estimated that 2% of the account receivable will be uncollectible. So ito yung percentage of uncollectibility. So paanong gagawin natin? We compute first how much is the ending balance of the allowance, then consider the credit balance before adjustments. Okay, so yung 300,000 natin, which is account receivable, times 2%. So we have 6,000 at ano ulit yung 6,000? 6,000 is our ending balance of allowance. Or yan po yung ating required. Yeah, the other term is required or estimated allowance. So dapat at the end of December 31, 2020, we are expecting that a total of 6,000 will be uncollectible. Okay? Then, um, bago mag-adjust, may binigay na 2,000 na balance. Nakakredit. So, since we're looking for the adjustments, credit yon, ididak po natin siya para makuha lang natin yung adjustments which is 4,000 pesos. Okay? So 4,000 lang adjustments kasi we have 2,000 already balance before adjustment. So parang ganito lang ulit yan. So if this is the T-account of the allowance, bago ka mag-adjust, may 2,000 ka na. Tapos after mo mag-adjust, ang na-compute mo, 6,000. So dapat ang adjustments lang po natin is 4,000. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. So ang entry natin, ginamitan natin ng bad debts na title kasi yung given was allowance for bad debts. So we debit bad debts expense, 4,000, and we credit allowance for bad debts, 4,000. So pag pinost natin yan, ang ating ending balance na talaga ng allowance would be 6,000. Don't worry class about posting ha. So I am just showing you right now the journal entries. No? Kasi in module 5 pa talaga tayo mag-formally journalize and post ng adjusting entries. So ngayon parang itong module 4 is um, bridging the gap between module 3 na trial balance at saka yung gagawin natin na adjusted balances on module 5. Okay, para doon sa module 5, babanggitin ko na lang. Ito yung mga adjusting entries natin. Okay, so I hope na sundan ninyo. So that is our percentage of account receivable balance. Okay, so 
lastly class no so um this is not in the module but i just want to add it no so we will be using the estimation of uncollectible accounts via the aging naman oops by the way before parang aging sorry nalimutan ko to so if you will be asked magkano naman yung net realizable value nitong um company na to uh, about the receivable so again the computation of the net realizable value on december 31 2020 is yung ending account receivable balance na 300,000 then deduct po natin yung ating 6,000 na ending balance ng allowance which was computed kanina. So, ang possible na lang na makulekta natin or the net realizable value of our accounts receivable is 294,000. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. Okay? So, ayan. <laughs> May iwanan ko na talaga ito. No? So, pagpasensya niyo na, no? hindi lumalabas agad yung mga nasa slides. Okay, kasalanan ko. No? Okay, so, last part na tayo, which is aging of receivables. Kanina class, dun sa ating outstanding balance, ang ating estimation percentage is based lang doon sa um, outstanding balance natin at nag-iisa lang yung percentage. No? So parang generalize natin na 2%, ito yung hindi makukulekta sa lahat ng receivable natin. Ngayon, pag sinabi nating aging of receivables method, it is somehow grouping our accounts receivables into categories no? based on the length of time that they have been outstanding. So kung, di ba parang ganito lang yan, Habang patagal ng patagal na hindi mo nakukollect yung accounts receivable, the more chances of uncollecting it. ba? Tama ba? Yung kaibigan mo ng utang, <laughs> tapos patagal na ng patagal, isang linggo lang, dalawang linggo lang, tatlong linggo, apat na linggo, hanggang sa nakalimutan ka na niyang bayaran. No? So ganun yung parang konsepto nitong aging. Kanina kasi, isang isahan lang eh, parang okay, ito yung estimate natin, isahan lang, yun yung magiging ano natin, allowance. Dito po, we tend to age, put the categories based on length of time na outstanding. Sir, paano po ikakategorize? Um, pwede kasi na halimbawa no, kung uh, gusto mo pwedeng 0 to 30 days. This is the first category. So ang customers na hindi nagbayad within this uh, 30 days period pwedeng 1% lang yung uh, pwedeng hindi natin makulekta. 31 to 60 for example no um papataas ng papataas yung percentage 2% na and then 61 to 90 no 3% and it depends upon how the company set up the categories sir uh, every 30 days lang hindi pwedeng every 60 days pwedeng every 90 days or what depending again upon the company Okay, so for the sake of problem and classroom discussion, of course, it will just be given to you. But in the reality, no, it will be set up in their policy depending upon the management discretion. Okay, so ayan, we will categorize. Tapos, just like the percentage of outstanding account receivable, yung percentage ng uncollectible natin uh, at nagroup natin na receivable, yun po yung panggagalingan ng ating uncollectible accounts. Okay, so mamaya I will show that in our example. And then lahat po ng mga um, allowance na nakompute natin per age category, i-add natin lahat para makuha natin yung total estimated uncollectible accounts. So parang nangyari lang, parang outstanding receivable balance pero nakakategorize siya based on the age. Okay? Sir, possible ba na Habang tumatagal, mas lumiliit yung uncollectability. Um, never, no? We have um, already experienced that, no? Based in real life, na habang tumatagal, mas lumalaki yung chance talaga na hindi natin makulekta. So, never mababaliktad na mas mataas yung percentage ng uh, ma mas maiksing days mula doon sa hindi nabayaran over the longest one. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Now, to show you paano nag-work itong aging of receivable method, so let me give you this example. And this is already my last slide for this discussion since um, this is just to show you how do we categorize at the same time, how do we um, compute for the allowance. Okay, so assume that KMA, company's account receivable on December 31, revealed the following and the balance of allowance before 
uh, adjustment was 8,000. So bago ka mag-adjust, you have 8,000 balance credit, no? So uh, as I have mentioned to you a while ago, no? So you have the aging category. So dito sa example natin, 0 to 30, 31 to 60, over 60. Sometimes in some problems, no? Pwede pang mas mahaba yan. Pwede umabot ng over 90, over um, 120 days, no? Depending upon the uh, given. Now, um, Siyempre, para makategorize mo siya properly, kailangan mong um, bilangin yung days ha. So again, uh, 0 to 30 will be based on the um, number of day kung kailan natin um, na record yung receivable. Okay? So um, let's say it is um, November 1 for example. So November 1 is the 0 and then November 30 is the 30 days. Okay? So there is a cons constant monitoring no as to the uh, age ng ating receivable. No? Kaya importante sa aging of receivables na we monitor the how long uh, is this receivable outstanding already at hindi pa nakukulekta. Okay? So ito po yung ating categorization. So nahati-hati na siya. So given na pero sometimes no, again you need to monitor in reality. So for 0 to 30 we have 125,000, for 31 to 60 we have 90,000 and for over 60 it's 100,000. Tapos as you can see no, it is estimated uncollectible. So 1% para sa um 0 to 30, 31 to 60 is 3% and then 10% naman. So habang tumatagal nga papalaki ng papalaki. Okay? Ay, bago ko iwanan to class, ha, please take note ha, dapat ang multiplier natin ay si uncollectability. Pag binigyan ka ng collectability, so ano ibig sabihin ng collectability? The chances of collections. Okay? So pag binigyan ka ng collectability, halimbawa nakalagay 90%, um, 80%, uh, 70%, Ibig sabihin niyan yung possibility of collections. So para maggamit natin siya sa uncollectability, kailangan natin siyang i-convert into uncollectability. Okay? Paano makocompute yung uncollectability? Simple lang. 100% less the collectability percentage. So halimbawa, no, 100% minus 90, so meron tayong 10%. Uh, 100% minus 80, 20%. And then 100% minus 70, so 30%. Again, ang kailangan natin is uncollectability. And itong pinakita ko lang po is just in case baka ang ibigay sa inyo is collectability, ibawas nyo yun sa 100% para makuha yung uncollectability which will be used in computing our allowance. Okay? So I hope that that is clear ha. So... If kailangan nyo i-absorb, i-post nyo. Kung kailangan nyo balikan para um, marinig nyo ulit, no? balikan niyo you can, uh, ano ba tawag doon? Uh, rewind no? yung part na yun. Okay? So you can do that uh, dito sa video lecture natin. Okay? So iwanan ko na yung assumption na yun. I will stick doon sa original. Okay? Ang hirap kasi maraming actually scenario. So I just want to present to you everything. Kaya medyo nasisingit minsan. Okay? So ayan. So ang gagawin natin pag na-categorize nyo, nalaman nyo kung magkano yung mga balances at saka uncollectible. So sabi natin kanina, you just multiply the amount of that age with its um, estimated uncollectability. So for 0 to 30 days, no, um, na 1% ng 125,000, so yung possible na hindi makolekta is 1,250. Okay? On that age category. Sa 31 to 60 naman, you have 90,000 and then 3% yung uncollectability rate. So we are expecting na 2,700 na possible na hindi makolekta for the category age of 31 to 60. Then for over 60 days, you have 100,000 okay, and then 10% yung uncollectability. So our um, allowance for this particular age category is 10,000. Okay? So, ang sabi natin kanina, once you have already computed the per category, you need to total it para makuha natin kung magkano yung total allowance po natin na possible na hindi makolekta. So, that's the total of 13,950. So, ito po yung ating required balance ng allowance. Okay? Required allowance na hindi natin possible makolekta. 
Okay? So, ito yung panggagalingan ngayon ng ating adjustment. So, pwede nyo nang i-apply ulit yung kagaya kanina ng mga scenarios. So, dito sa problem, we have 8,000 credit no, before mag-adjust. Okay? So, ang entry natin would be, ay, doubtful accounts expense yung ginamit ha. So, doubtful dapat ang gagamitin. So, on December 31, 2020, debit doubtful accounts expense. 5,950 and credit the allowance 5,950. Sir, saan nang galing yun? Remember, the required balance of the allowance is 13,950. So, kung gagawa tayo ng T-account ng allowance, dapat maging 13,950 daw yung ending balance. And then, bago tayo mag-adjust, nabanggit na kanina na may 8,000 credit. Okay? So, kung 8,000 in credit, kailangan maging 13,950. So, yung kulang na lang po yung ating idadagdag, which is 5,950. So, do not forget that if it is um, credit balance, then ididedact natin siya para mag-arrive sa adjustments. Okay? So, this is our adjusting entry. So again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay? And then lastly, no, um, magkano yung net realizable value natin? So again, the net realizable value is the difference of the total receivable, which is 315,000, at saka yung required balance ng allowance natin na 13,950. So if I ask you magkano siya i-report sa statement of financial position, it will be a net realizable value or amortized costs or carrying value of the accounts receivable na 301,050. Okay? Sir, current and current Remember, accounts receivable for the trading purposes is considered as current. Oh, by the way, sorry. <laughs> FABM pala to. So, ayan, no? um, we will be discussing that further in our succeeding discussion. Okay? So I hope that that is clear, ha? So again, if you do have questions, please let me know. Okay? So that's our, um, about uh, the discussion on the uncollectible accounts, the bad debts, or the doubtful accounts. Again, pag may mga questions, please let me know sa chat box or you can comment on this video lecture. Okay? So with that, no, I will end my discussion, but I will see you all in our next video lecture as the continuation of our adjusting entries okay so i hope that you are all safe and have a great day everyone kamsamida kapan ka sayonara bye bye have a great day and